Have you ever like read a book and then wondered why no one else is talking about it? Yeah, that was how I felt after I read Fireborn. Like, why is no one else talking about it? There's like two other people here on YouTube that I've seen talk about it. And that makes me sad because this is such a good book. More people need to be talking about it. I will link reviews from the other like two people I've seen talk about it. And that is Elliot Brooks and Ashley from Don't Have a Degree in Reading. I will link both of their reviews down below for you so you can get, you know, all three of our perspectives because... I want to start out by saying I absolutely loved this book. It was fantastic. And I really do think more people should read it. Fireborn is a YA fantasy that is very heavily political. We are following the perspective of two orphans, Annie and Lee. Lee is a member of the fallen aristocracy. He watched his entire family be murdered right in front of him on what they call Palace Day, which is the day that like the people retook over and threw oh, through overthrew the monarch. And then Annie, our other main POV orphan character, she was one of the very low class individuals in society prior to the like reestablishment. And her entire family was murdered in front of her by the aristocracy. So you can see how, you know, them being friends is a little strange. But Lee was basically saved. He was put into this orphanage and nobody knew that he was like the son of one of these high aristocratic, I cannot say that word. <sighs> what are these high aristocratic people that like were ruling the kingdom? So like nobody knows who he is. And it's kind of like his like dark secret. And Annie though, figures it out. <laughs> it's like one of those things where she knows super early, but like doesn't know she knows. So them being friends is a really, really cool dynamic. And we follow them a lot through their entire lives. But the younger is shown mostly in flashbacks. So we get flashbacks of them at the orphanage quite often during our regular timeline. And in our regular timeline, we follow them as they are competing to be in this like league of dragon riders so basically like the dragon rider army and they are competing for like very very high spots and ultimately to be like the commander of this new dragon rider army because originally during the time of the monarchy only the monarchy could ride dragons now it's available for everyone as long as you test into it so it's kind of a cool dynamic seeing that Lee, a former member of the aristocracy, and Annie both test into being dragon riders. So during this book, there is a very heavy focus on politics and this tournament. So if you don't like tournaments, you probably won't like this, but I love a good tournament. I love a competition. I just think it's so much fun. And we get dragons, lots of dragons, lots of people riding dragons and bonding with dragons and lots of dragon lore. And I'm just here for it. I am a sucker for a good dragon story and dragon riders. In this book, since it is YA, we, our protagonists are younger and we do have kind of this like love square, I will call it. It is not a love triangle because there are four people involved. But I actually really like how it's done because I don't think it is done in the way that we normally see in YA books. It is not a, do I pick him or do I pick him? And it's not a secret. It's like very out in the open. And it's not like this super amount of jealousy involved, like, of course, there's like some angst and feelings, but it's not the main focus is not like the relationships. 
as far as like romantic relationships. So I really like that because we have Annie and Lee and like, oh, I want them together. Like, I feel like they need to remain together in like this should be enemies to lovers, but they're friends first. So they're friends to lovers. And, but there is that aspect of potential enemies just coming from where their lives began. So I really like that aspect of it, but like there's other characters that there's romantic, you know, intentions with that just kind of happens. And isn't that kind of how it goes though in life? Like as a teenager, you're like, I like him. Like we're going to make out. And then I like this dude. We're going to be like, we do have a lot of like really great friendships in this book, which is something I love to see like Annie and Lee. And then the rest of like our kind of core group, while some of them are like romantically interested in one another, we really get to see them put that to the back burner and put the friendships first. So even though like Annie and this other girl both kind of want to be with Lee, they're not competing with each other. They're not hating each other. They're not fighting each other. They end up like going out and having like girls day kind of and like celebrating each other and remaining friends and seeing that that friendship is still the main focus, even though there's this like romantic tension, like in the background, which I really appreciate. I really liked that we could kind of put the differences aside because they're like, okay, but we're friends. Like first and foremost, we're friends. So we're not gonna let this like get in the way of our friendship. Same way with the one boy, Duck, who really likes Annie, but she kind of sees him more as just a friend, but he refuses to let his romantic interest in her ruin their friendship. So I really think that that part was just so well done. Like I kind of have mentioned, I really loved the dynamic between Annie and Lee. I love seeing them at the orphanage together. Like that just was so good. And I feel like it added so much to the story, kind of seeing where they came from and then what they became and how their life was not all sunshine and roses and how their friendship isn't even easy all the time, but they still love each other and make that work. And, you know, they have their arguments like any friendship will. They have their distrust as Annie learns to accept who Lee is and kind of realizes that her best friend is not 100% who she thought he was, but really he never hid that from her. So she, he really is who she thought he was. She just didn't realize it, I guess. Like it was just, I loved that. Seeing their relationship and kind of that struggle between do they want to remain friends or more or are they enemies or can she trust him can he trust her like it's so so good now that i've gushed kind of about like characters and relationships the actual plot of the book is really cool too we're following like i said the tournament but also we're following like an attempted uprising of the old monarchy they are basically coming back for vengeance and one of Lee's cousins kind of discovers that he is who he is and that he is alive and she tries to get him to rejoin their side. Be like, we can rule together. This is our birthright. Da, 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 da. And it's, it shows a lot of his inner struggle, but then it also starts to highlight, well, is this new regime? any better than the old one because it starts to slip back into old habits even though the monarchy has been overthrown we see a lot of similarities once we really look at it between the old guard and the new guard and it's like they're starting to realize like am i backing the right person like do, is this what we want? Like we overthrew the monarchy so everyone would have a fair chance at life, but we still have this caste system, even though it's just a little different. So instead of, you know, being born in your place, you can test into, you know, 
whatever cast you're meant to be in. But is the test really fair? Um, because for some reason it seems like your poorer people are testing into lower castes and your traditionally wealthy people are still testing into higher castes. Like how, how fair is it really? And it's kind of interesting because to me, like you can't really work towards improving your station because once you take this test, like that's it, that's your station. Okay. Like what? Like our one girl, we get to kind of learn about the caste system, tests into a pretty low caste because she's dyslexic, basically. That's what the gist I got from it. So it's not that she's dumb. It's that like the testing was difficult for her. And that kind of hit me because like my daughter is dyslexic and we're like struggling with that right now. So kind of seeing that portrayed was like, whoa, like, okay, that makes sense. Like this is how the caste system is working. So this book really explores some of those themes of like the new guard and the old guard and what it takes to really overthrow a monarchy without becoming the thing that you oppose the most. And I really loved that exploration of the political themes in this book. And I just, I love a political fantasy, y'all. This might have seemed slower paced to a lot of people, but to me, I adore adored it. I ate it up. It was just give me all the politics. Like I love it. And then there's this twist at the end that I did not see coming. And I was like, oh, really? So that was really cool. I'm not going to spoil it because it was just like a small moment when you find out something about Lee's past and his, it's just like, Oh, so definitely go into this, like knowing that it's kind of a slower tournament political fantasy. The one kind of like complaint that I have is the world building. I wish it would have been stronger. I understand kind of why it's not. It is a debut. It is a shorter book and it is YA, but I still wish we'd have had just, just, just a little more knowledge of the world itself. And I think maybe in the second book, when that comes out this year, we will kind of get more of the world building, hopefully, because I would really love to see more of this world outside of like this city that we are in, basically. So yeah, if you want to check out a really cool kind of darker YA fantasy, definitely pick up Fireborn. The second book will be coming out in 2021. So it's a perfect time to go ahead and get the first one and start reading it. All right. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me. My name is Jessie and I will talk to you next time. Bye.